Uh, today we will start from our chapter 1 and the title is an investment perspective of human resource management right. So, it the title said an investment perspective right investment perspective of human resource management. So, what type of investment actually we are talking about investment perspective right human resource management in terms of investment that means investing in our employees right. So, previously what happened HRM was only concerned about recruiting people how to uh, like uh, achieve goal by using people salary compensation this sort of a stuff sometime training ok. But we said in strategic human resource management it is a bit different from traditional human resource management right. So, how is it different because strategic human resource management actually concerns about our people human resource more than the traditional one they think about investing in employees. But traditional format said it is not necessary to invest in employees because employees may leave the job. So, if you invest in people it will be like a lost cause because people may leave the job and the uh, like the cost will be in vain ok. But now we say strategic human resource management said if you invest in people they will be motivated and they will stay loyal to the company. So, that is why the starting of the chapter the title is investment perspective because we want to change our perspective in strategic human resource management. So, to start with what is human resource management? It is a management process of human of course. So, we want to manage our human resource of an organization in a strategic and coherent way that means in a systematic manner right and we have to follow some strategies to achieve this goal because to achieve any goal or any sort of work we need to make a blueprint right a framework a strategy. So, human resource management is a strategy or a planning to achieve the human related goal of an organization why you want to do, do that because we want the betterment of the organization right and we can do this via two ways either individually or collectively that means individually focusing in each employee and also by focusing on group groups of employee right. So, depending on the organization nature the human resource strategies would be different ok. The thing here said see the human resource management process are mainly general processes are concerned with employing people right that means uh, uh, motivating people to do some work then also training them developing them these are the basic policy developing strategy these are the basic ones. Now, the difference is uh, a, a framework or model was suggested in 1989 there are four aspect of continual meaningful version of strategy HRM that means from traditional HRM when we started to move towards our strategic HRM in 1989. So, this man John Story he actually proposed four aspect by changing our perception and changing our process we can change ourselves from traditional HR to strategic HRM. So, what are the four aspect first one is a particular uh, constellation of benefit and assumptions that means uh, in some organization manager have some, some sort of assumption pre assumption like they always think that employees are lazy they do not like to work ok and uh, only monetary uh, feedback or monetary return will motivate them which is not true. So, first we have to change our perspective then what comes is trust informing decision about people management that means we have to have proper knowledge of our people. There are uh, for say in this organization there are uh, 150 people, but the HR manager does not know uh, half of them by face by name they know them, but where they, what is their background like uh, what is their skills knowledge prior experience they do not know it. So, how will they utilize their, their skills right. So, HR must have knowledge about each and every employee. So, this is another thing after that comes a certain involvement of line manager that means uh, for say uh, human resource manager uh, prime job is hiring people right. So, they are hiring for different departments right not for only HR department they hire for each and every department. Now, how a HR manager will supposed to know what is the requirement of an uh, marketing executive what is their job job description how he will be know that will be knowing that 
it's not possible him for him to know each and every details of each department right so he has to work with the line managers right line managers that means individual department heads so if he sits with the marketing manager then he can ask okay what type of employee need for executive what is the job he has to done what is the job description then he will write a job description and according to that he will find a suitable candidate right so he has to work with the line manager as well so it's not like that other departments are enemy or if i work with other department like i don't know anything right it's not a, a matter of ego or pride we have to work in a alignment after that the comes reliance upon set of levels of shape the employees relationship that means we have to shape our employee relationship we have to focus on building employee relationship and it said a different level right for executive the relationship focus will be different for senior level uh, relationship focus will be different right the, those who are the senior employees and are with uh, with the company for the longer period of time their commitment is obviously stronger right rather than the executive so i have to provide them more i have to benefit give benefit them more rather than the executive one so the relationship level would be different of course right some information i would share with only the seniors not with the junior, uh, juniors because there's loyalty issue commitment issue right so according to different level employee relationship will also vary so when we are thinking about planning a model for our company in perspective of strategic hrm we have to concern for this four aspect we have to keep in mind these four terms then we can plan that okay see this is the matching model of hrm we all know about it right matching model hrm is the basic model a very basic model of hrm uh, this thing all the organization actually does first starting with selection that means recru uh, recruitment process right they uh, first what they actually uh, actually do what is the first job of hr when he uh, wants to recruit some candidate what he does actually so the first job know the requirement job requirement first okay so then prepare the uh, job description and uh, specification yes and job very important point job description job description job analysis right specification that means analysis what is the basic difference between job description and job analysis you are right about the job description so these are the list of things an employee needs to do right list of things list of roles a, an employee needs to perform right job description so if i say uh, if i see a circular of an hr executive so by seeing that there will be uh, tasks like that you have to work with the hr manager you have to help in uh, recruiting the employees you have to help in ma making the uh, planning process or training process you have to uh, communicate with the employee in the daily basis you have to do daily um, uh, hr activities or administrative activities right so these are the job description that means what a employee is supposed to do in an organization for this that particular position now what is job analysis or But specification yes training and other skills, skills knowledge what need to perform those knowledge experience, experience ability yeah that means when we look at a circular we say what type of skill they are requiring if they say we need a, a bba graduate for a, in hr from a reputed university that means i need what is my knowledge they are asking for my knowledge then skills right you need to have knowledge about hri software that means they are asking for my skill if they say you have to have at least one year of experience that means they are asking for my experience and if they say uh, the candidate must have the ability to work under pressure that means my ability yeah. 
right. So, these sort of things are our job analysis. So, it is an HR's job to ensure each and every for each and every position he has to write job description and job analysis. So, without the help of the line manager, how can he do that, right? It is nearly impossible. So, first job selection. So, the selection process actually start with writing the job description and job analysis for each position. Then what he does, he actually give a circular via online or physical form newspaper, right. So, from there, there must be a pool of candidates who applied. Though from those pool of candidates, he actually choose a few candidates who are more potential, then arrange an interview, right. So, after interview what happens, they select the candidate then the work is done, which our work is done, then they need to orient. Yeah, we need orientation, right? We need orientation and training as well. So, training is for new employees as well as old employees. Those who are coming new, give them orientation, those who are existing employee, give them training, right? So, after that, they have to also give appraisal, right? The employees you have to appraise them, right? Performance appraisal. Why an employee will work in your organization if there is no motivating factor, right? They are working very well, but you are not uh, appraising any of their performances. The employee who is working uh, below average and the employee who is wor working above average, you are evaluating them the same. They are getting the same salary, same benefit, right? Same bonus. Will you be motivating, motivated to work in that environment? No, you leave the job. The, person who gives the most effort, he will leave the job. That is why performance appraisal is needed. The employee who is uh, giving the most output, give them some incentive, extra benefit, right? After that, rewards. Now tell me what is the difference between benefit and incentive? We say benefit and incentive giving, right? And incentives? Incentive is uh, extra Incentive, yes, it depends on work performance, right? If you achieve a KPA or a certain goal, then you get a special, um, uh, uh, special treatment. But benefits are those which is actually related, uh, like apart from your salary, what you are getting extra for say lunch subsidy, transportation service, mobile bill. So, these are our benefits, okay. So, reward actually there can be benefits and incentives. It can be monetary, non-monetary, land subsidiary, yeah, medical facility. These are not directly monetary, right? These are non-monetary. If you are sick, they will pay for you, but they are not giving you money directly. So, it is non-monetary, right? Indirectly monetary. And if they give a like a holiday tour for uh, a week with your family in Maldives. This is also not directly monetary, right? So, rewards can be different type of monetary or non-monetary. So, to whom, em which employee, what type of reward is given, that is the, the decision makes by, taken by HR, okay? After that is come of development, the work of an HR. What type of development you are talking about here? That is related to directly to job and also for succession plan and other related. Development that means development of the employees, right? Because HR is all about employees related with employees, talk about the personals. So, development of employees. So, here we are talking about training and personal growth, right? So, it can be counseling. If an employee is facing any problem, go to the HR, he counseling, give him counseling. If he is not uh, like performing up to the mark, then identify the problem. What is his problem? Why is doing that, right? And solving the problem. So, it, this all a part of our development plan. So, this is a very basic concept of HRM, which is known as the matching model, which was actually founded in 1984. So, it is a very ancient model, right? 1984. But in Bangladesh, we actually perform this model now. And it's 21, 2021 and the model from 1984 and the uh, more uh, developed countries, they actually do not use any manual factor in nature, you know, everything is automated, human resource information system, they follow it, HRIS and everything is software based, but we still are, we are very backdated and we are still relying on the manual factors like giving employee, uh, taking employees information in a form, keeping the form, 
keeping individual employee right. file and making cabinets after cabinets and uh, it's no use actually. It's no use and it's very time consuming, you know. But if you use a software within one click, you will know everything about the employee, the history of employee. And what happens when an uh, employee leaves the company, they actually throw the file, right? But it's it not supposed to be like that. You have to keep the files. Why? For say the employee is related with some sort of crime and the people come for investigation, but you don't have any information, then they will charge you. You are supposed to take information about the employee, where is the information, right? There can be security issues, the uh, sort of things. The employee may return to your company again. Maybe he left the company, then he joined another company, he returned again. It's your duty to find out why he left and why he's coming back. But if you have no record, how can you find it? Right. So with HRIS software, it is very easy to find out. We don't, you don't have to go through the files. Okay. So this is a very old model, uh, the matching model of HR. Now we are uh, following a very different and updated model. We'll follow that uh, later on. This is another model, the Harvard framework. So Harvard framework, this is uh, actually uh, from Harvard school and it was also originated in 1984. This is an old model, but it is also followed in our country, okay, for suitable for our country. So it actually says according to uh, the Harvard model, there are some advantages. So what are the advantages if you follow this model? First of all is, one is your stakeholder interest, thinking about the stakeholder interest. What is the difference between a stockholder and a stakeholder? One is a stockholder and one is, we are talking about stakeholders. What is the difference between them? Who are the stock owner and who are related to uh, the whole thing, they are stakeholders in many aspects, other department, other people. That means stockholder is basically a person who is purchasing our share, yes. company share, right? Mm -hmm. And a stakeholder is the people associated with the organization, which is di who are directly or indirectly, their interests are related with the organization, right? Stakeholder, that means employee, customer, or our supplier, manufacturer, everything related to the organization. So a stakeholder. That means it's talking about we have to incorporate everyone, like thinking about everyone. HR's job is not only limited by thinking about employee, for employee. For say, if uh, my employee is performing very well, so it would benefit only the organization or the society as well. If my employee is performing very well, he will bring more profit, right? Profit generation, it is a, a part of finance. After that, if my employee is performing very well, customer will be more happy, customer satisfaction, part of marketing, right? If my employee is very efficient, then what would happen? There will be cost saving factor, efficient cost saving factor. That means my employee will face more profitability. So the thing HR, it is indirectly related with many factors, right? Many stakeholders. So if an employee is happy and he is doing his job best, everyone eventually would be happy, right? Company will run smoothly. That's why it's talking about stakeholder interest, how we can increase the stakeholders interest. Then it's talking about one kind of trade-off, see? What does it mean by trade-off? It's talking about one kind of trade-off. Which type of trade-off I'll tell later, but what's the basic definition of trade-off? What do you understand by trade-off? Amar life in the orta shakshma use kori. We trade-off, trade kori, change, exchange, right? Trade-off is related in terms with exchange, like you are giving up something to get something trade-off. So if you say um, in the morning you came here by bus. So you chose bus but not the bike. So you are giving up your time to concern for money. Bus is more uh, cheap but it is, it takes a bit of time. If you have chosen bike, it would be costly but it would save your time. So you trade off between bus and bike, right? That means money over time. So this is trade-off, okay? So here we are talking about trade-off either explicit or implicit. That means internal or external, okay? Which type of between the interest of owner and these of employees, okay? Sometimes what happen, the owner perception and employees perception, they might not match. Then there might be a conflict, okay? 
So we are talking about we have to trade off like if the owner is right, if owner's uh, opinion is valuable for the stakeholder, then we must listen to the owner. But if the employee is right and it is good for the organization, for the stakeholder, we must listen to the employees. So we have to trade off sometimes, okay. We have to trade off between the owner's interest and employee's decision, interest. Then it's talking about employee influence. Employee HR to include employee influence in the organization work and associated question to the supervisor style. What type of employee in influence can be in a department? Positive influence or negative influence we're talking about here. In supervisory style, they uh, suggested to include employee influence. That means mainly in supervisory style, right? That means supervisory style who actually create the style or who actually plan out all of this, a manager, a HR manager. But sometimes what happens, the managers take the employees for granted. They don't take their decision, right? But the employee might know better than you because they, uh, uh, they are direct contact with the customer, they are in direct contact with the customer, right? So they know more. So if you, uh, the, if those influence are taken for granted, it would be beneficial for your organization, right? So sometimes employee influence is good. Sometimes you have to take employees word for granted. Employees take as well. Don't always take their word for granted. So in the supervisory style, include their decision as well. So Harvard model actually suggests that. Then uh, it said management choice of strategy. Management choice of strategy suggesting a masting of both product market and social cultural logics. Okay. So, right? Management choice of a strategy. First of all, that means when a management is choosing a strategy, planning a strategy. Two things must be there. First one is product, uh, meeting the uh, both product market and social cultural logics. That means we are thinking about product if the product is right, right? Product is okay and then social cultural logic. What type of social cultural logic we are talking about? What sort of stuff? Think about the longevity of a business. If we want to sustain in a business, we have to think about our sustainability, right? We have to think, think about our environment, our society, our people, right? So th that sort of thing are included in social cultural logics. We have to work in a way which benefits our environment and social culture as well. Not just, the, not only profit making, it's not our goal. Only profit making is not our goal. So management strategy must include also product by which we will earn profit. Also we have to think our, about our environment and social culture, our people. Last one is emphasize strategic choice. It is not driven by situational or environmental determinants. Emphasize strategic choice. It is not driven by situational or environmental determinants. That means we have to make choice which will not be depending on a situation or environment. We have to think as a whole. When we make a decision, what sort of stuff we keep in mind? We keep in mind about our finance, right? What type of resources we have? Do we have the right people to carry out the work? Do we have the infrastructure to support our system? Like do we have electricity or gas or water, right? So we think about those sort of things. So don't make excuse only for situation environment. Don't look for situation. When you want to management, okay, I made this choice because the situation was like this. I made this choice because environment is No, make a choice prior to that. Contingency may happen. There will be problems. There will be risk, but we have to take the risk, right? There might arise a problem. If problem is not going to we plan We have to plan accordingly. So don't only say situation and environment and don't depend on them. Considering all the factors, take the 
strategies or make the strategies. Both of, both of them might change. Yeah, both of them might change. How can you rely on situation environment, right? So don't rely on them. Rely on the constant factors and keep in mind that we might face risk. It is a part of life. It is a part of plan, okay? And plan accordingly. So this is the basic things a Harvard model said. Now see how it actually benefits the organization. The Harvard model, we talked about stakeholder interest, situational factors, right? So Harvard model actually said we have to look for our stakeholder interest. So who are the stakeholder? Our, uh, our uh, shareholder, management, employee, government, you know, the, those who are actually related associated with our organization. So if our stakeholder interests are intact, they are happy, then the situation factors are in our support, right? Situational factor, what are they? Workforce characteristics, that means the employee, they work in our organization, they are in our favor. Then there is business strategy and condition. Our business strategy and condition are well equipped for our environment. Management philosophy. Management philosophy matches with employee philosophy. So there will be no conflict. After that, labor market. That means what the skills you need, the people you need, you are availing it, they are available, right? After that come union, a good relationship with labor union because if there is dispute, there will be no work. Then task technology, if you have the technological support and last one law and social values. You, the country you are doing business in, you have to follow their law and social context, right? So if the situation factor and shareholder interest, they are aligned, then what will happen? HR policy choice. This will influence your HR policy choice. How? Employee influence. These factors, employees will be working accordingly, according to the stakeholder interest and situational factor. Human uh, um, resource flow will be according to that. See, we are talking about in the situational factor about labor market, right? If the labor market is short, then how will have flow of human resource, right? And the, if the labor market is good, then we will have a good human resource of flow. So if depending on the situational factor and stakeholder factor, the HR policy will be changing, right? We have to take different type of policy for different situation. Reward system will be changing depending on the quality of employee we get. After that, work system. Depending on the uh, management, depending on the government, depending on the country we are doing business in, we have to change our work system. If the policy are done, making done, then we focus on our HR outcome. If the policies are accordingly, then the outcome would be commitment, conscience and cost effectiveness. Okay. If stake, stakeholders interest and situational factor, considering these two factor, we have to make our HR policy, right? If our HR policy are all are aligned and in, is a good condition, the outcome would, would be employees would be happy, there would be more profitability, cost would be minimized and commitment, employee commitment would be increased. These are the outcomes. If these are all positive, the outcome is if it's positive, what would be the long term consequences? Because in business we are talking about sustainability. So we have to think about long term consequences. Long term consequences would be individual well being, that means individual employee well being, organization effectiveness, work effectiveness will be increased and social well being as well. That means we will be benefiting the society as well, right? The profit we will be making will also give something to the society, right? How? The people who are hiring, they are coming from the society. So if we are a big company, we will be hiring more people. So it will benefit the society, it will grow the society. But if the outcomes are negative, then what will happen in the long run? The situations will be all negative. It will be individual uh, uh, well-being will be interrupted, social will, uh, well-being will not happen, organization will be uh, not effective, right? So if the outcome is positive, in the long run, the company will run positively. If the outcome is negative, the long, in the long run, company will suffer. So it will depend on what ultimately? The HR policy. So we have to choose our HR policy very carefully, depending on which factor, depending on these two factors. Depending on these two factors, we have to make our HR policy. So this is our actually Harvard model of HR. Any confusion is in this topic? Okay, 
see this is the context of strategic human resource management okay see we are telling uh, we are actually discussing about source of employee value that means where we can get our employee where from okay which are the sources where can we get our uh, desired employees first one see technological knowledge now a day uh, the um, we are living in a, a terms where we are technologically advanced and it is a globalization term right so every and each employee must know about technology if he is not technological sound then no company will hire them right this is the actually fact and this is the reality so a employee must have technical technical knowledge which sort of market process customer environment technological knowledge we actually think about ms word right powerpoint this sort of or a softer knowledge but it's not actually like that technological knowledge have different factors about market you have to know market how to run the market processes that means softwares customers and as well as your environment depending on environment technology change in bangladesh we actually use uh, a uh, semi moderate uh, technology in developed countries they are actually work with the advanced technology right so technological knowledge after that ability to learn and grow what happens most of the employees they are very well equipped well knowledge they have skills but they cannot cope with other people we see in the organization right many people say i'm very good uh, good at this 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 and this if i do individual work i will give my 100% but don't put me in any group i'm not i'm bad at group work so that means you have you have don't have the ability to learn and grow right you have to work in a group openness to new ideas sometimes what happens uh, it happens to the senior most of the time they think they knows the best that's why they are uh they don't follow new ideas when a uh, junior suggests something they say no i know better okay but what happens they are actually coming from a fresh mind right they are learning new things so they might know better than you so you have to follow new ideas so you have to be open to new ideas it's not like the, that you know better and you know that that is you have to like follow this way all the through no after that acquisition of knowledge or skill the uh, sometimes what happen on um, most uh, the seniors employee they actually uh, very reluctant to learn about new uh, ideas and learn about new technology and they don't gain the knowledge so a uh, employee must have this quality as well a uh, employee he has to be open for new ideas and he has to learn new knowledges stay up to date after that decision making capabilities that means if you want to go for a manager level like if you are an executive you don't need to make such uh, big decisions right so you don't need to bother about that but if you want to grow in your career and you go for a manager position decision making capability is must you cannot ask every time to your senior what to do that means you have don't you don't have any judgment quality right so to go to a higher decision a, a higher position you must have decision making capability decision making capability is not only making decision making an effective decision right a effective decision which will benefit the organization after that motivation say for you are a manager now you take all the important decisions but you are a very rigid person and no one listens to you you cannot motivate people then you would be a good leader a good manager has to be a good leader right you have to motivate people accordingly so you have to have those skills how to motivate your employees because at the end of the day you are not going to do the work alone as a manager it's not your job to do the work it is your job to what to achieve the work right achieve the work by your employees this is your job your job is to acquire the work from your employees not doing the job yourself so you have to motivate employees and then commitment if your employee your team doesn't trust you that means they you are not a good leader a good motivator so you have to build commitment towards your employees then the last one is see teamwork interpersonal uh, skills and leadership ability teamwork what is the interpersonal skills that means you have a charismatic personality where people like to work with you right you have a good communication skill a good vocal you have a good fluency so people is really happy to work with you and what is leadership ability in a team you always lead what you say people actually listen apnar ekta jinish dekhben in a class 
sometimes what happens some people are there who actually lo love to take lead right out of like 100 students if a teacher asks okay who wants to do this job or who wants to take this responsibility there will be one or uh, one or two people who will be like raising their hand okay i i like this job i want to do it i want to do it and others will th think oh without um, money uh, why will i do that right? it is more hassle just let it be right so that means what they have a good leadership quality okay they like to take the lead so our, our employee must have this sort of skill as well so depending on the level of skill you have it will depend on your career path as well depending on the skill your position will be accordingly in the organization yes environment means the uh, uh, the uh, country or the context you are working in you know for say um, if i say about bangladesh so what is the uh, in terms of bangladesh what is the environment of educational sector here what sort of technology we are using here we need to know about um, ms software if you are from business background uh, for maybe stata uh, basic software uh, of uh, statistics sometimes sps right so this sort of knowledge you are talking about but if i am talking about india for i am going to be uh, i am going uh, delivering a lecture in mit then what type of skills uh, take uh, in i need so their environment is a uh, total different right they are actually using higher and advanced software so i have to uh, well equipped it with their environment so environment means where our employees working well equipped it with their technology okay environment technology or technical uh, always not referring the internet of things no no because technical is, is like a handy thing so how, yeah. how much you are handy with your stuff you know your flexibility with the uh, with the yeah, advance advancement like agriculture or other they are also technical experts. yeah technical experts in right like uh, how to grow uh, rice in uh, salted water this is a technical thing right so it's not related with anything with software but this is a technical knowledge you need to have. So this is also technical. Uh, we are t talking about technical knowledge, not technology itself. Okay, technical knowledge, how to work in a more smarter way. Technical knowledge. Uh, clear about this slide? Any confusion here? Okay, uh, I think, okay, these two are the last slide for today. This is a very short concept. Uh, the uh, the starting of the our, in our chapter we discussed about investment perspective of hrm right so it is called uh, actually saying investing adopting an investment perspective how we can do that basically what happens see the optimal uh, optimal ma uh, max of high profit um, performance high return asset and um, sometimes uh, most of the time the organizations actually what they do they invest in new product new technology or in a new market right if in any business proposal or any business planning if you see then uh, or in a what it is called annual report there are future plans given right in the future plans they will say okay in the next year we'll be having a new market we will introduce a new market we will introduce a new product we will invest in a new portfolio right we will acquire a new company but you will never hear, uh, hear about this that i will invest in my people why they do it why actually they are not investing in people rather than investing in materialistic thing the direct outcome uh, may never show yes because of the direct outcome if you invest in a product in a market of or you acquire a new company there is directly link with finance right you will know you will get instant return but if you invest in people, there is no instant return. You, there might be uh, no return at all. You have to like uh, you have to have faith and go through it, right? It will give you a bo uh, benefit in long term, but in not in short time. So, what type of investment you are talking about? Maybe giving in employees training. Now, your company has two choices. They have money for uh, a project. Either they can invest in a new product, or they can send their employees in a foreign country for acquiring uh, advanced training. So if you choose investing in employee, what will happen? They will be technologically advanced, they will be more knowledgeable and when they, when they will be returning to Bangladesh, they will apply those knowledge, right? So by that, your pro profitability will also increase, but it will take a bit of time. 
But if you invest in a new product, you know it will certainly give you benefit, right? Instant benefit. It also carries some risk. Yeah. Investing in employee carries some risk. Risk, right? Yes. Product, it will run. You know, there is a chance of 74, 70, 30. But if you invest in employee and the next they come in Bangladesh, the next day they leave the job and go to a, a new company with a higher salary, what will happen? So that this sort of for this sort of reason, many companies actually are reluctant to uh, like adopt this investment perspective. So it is actually said we have to change our mindset. Risks are everywhere. It is not guaranteed if you invest in a product, it will run successfully, right? In these days, madam, there is some policy also. You have to sign for three years, next three years. If That's go, why they do it. Because they, if they are hiring you for a very lucrative position, uh, uh, for a managerial position, and if you leave the job, they will be at risk. Because they are investing in you, they are giving you training, they are giving you performance bonus. What happens in the bank? Why they are so strict? They sign you a, uh, sign uh, with you a, with a bond, right? in a contract like three years or five years bond why they do it for the senior positions because according to our performance a manager gets five bonus right at least five performance bonus they get in a year on a fiscal year so think about their salary might be one lakh or one lakh fifty thousand on the top of that they are getting five bonus and addition additionally they are getting car for the driver uh, allowances as well as the lunch subsidy someone uh, even they are uh, giving foreign tours as well with the company money so if they are investing so much in you why they will be letting you go right that's why they sign a contract they will train you they will give you everything you need they will invest in you and they will keep you that's why if people this is a risky job and people have no commitment that's why sign a bond this is the easy one okay if you leave your job you have to pay one year salary of yours now go pay 12 lakh salary, you will not be able to do that. That's why you will not be able to leave your job, okay? So there are different strategies, how we can uh, invest in employees as well as keep them, okay? We'll learn uh, about this a bit later. Okay, this is the last slide for today. This is mainly types of organization asset and capital. We actually know what type of uh, resource we need to work in an organization. Finance, physical finance mean mainly monetary resources, equity uh, or share or cash right or accounts payable uh, receivables these are the our financial resources for the physical resources it may be equipment land plant machineries building right market goodwill good word of mouth our branding our brand our product quality right face value so customer loyalty product line so these are my market sometimes patent trademark copyright this can be my market resource operational management practice management policies right technology and last one is the human resource education knowledge skill competabilities work habit so see among all of this resource this resource human resource is most difficult to manage and finance is really easy to manage so this is mainly uh, a ease of management, which resource is easy to handle. Human mind are very complex, right? Every one, uh, one of you is different than another. So you never know what is going in one's mind, right? So uh, every employee will be responding differently to a certain thing. For say, if a, your company gives you a promotion and uh, give you an increment of money, you will be very happy. Someone might not. Someone might say, no, I wanted a higher position, not the money but you are happy with the money. Someone might say, no, my, if my title would be like that, I would be happy, I don't need money, give me the title, okay? Someone might say, okay, uh, uh, if you are having a tour, uh, for one week tour with the family in Cox's Bazaar, you'll be very happy. Someone would say, no, if they give the money, it would be better. I don't need the tour, I need the cash. Okay, so human mind is very complex. You don't know how to handle them, you don't know how to motivate them, but you can assume, right? We can just assume assumption but it would not be 100 percent accurate that's why this human resource is very difficult to deal with other than that others are um, with uh, finance you can uh, do a data analysis right you can do uh, like um, past trend you see the past trend and invest in the company invest in the product physical resources buy a machine you know which machine will be needing what when market a bit more stable right goodwill customer loyalty you uh, it's close like 80 20 you know the risk and you know what is your opportunity and what is your strength operational 
a bit technical because there is a technology work structure. If you uh, build a wrong policy, your organization might fail. If you, the work structure is not suitable, employees might be dissatisfied. So it is, it is a bit tough, but the most difficult part is handling human resource. So these are the main resources we need to, uh, need, need to operate um, in an organization. And the most difficult one is human resource. And this course is all about yeah, how to handle this difficult resource, how to read their mind, right? How to get close to them. Just give a good assumption, not 100% correct, but at least 90% correct, right? This is our work. Okay, so that's all for today. Inshallah, in next class, we'll continue from this slide. If you have any confusion regarding today's class and just go through the slides and book, come to me in the next class and I will solve the problem, okay? Video ta pause kore diyan. Shabai kya tennis sheet ta sign kora kachan?